The big question is why are biotech giants pouring millions of dollars into bioengineering food sources that are rich in this powerhouse molecule? Biotech firms are intensifying efforts to genetically modify everyday fruits and vegetables, aiming to unlock the potential for reversing aging. Tomatoes, for example, a staple in many diets, are a prime target for such enhancements. So, after 20 years of research, Norfolk Healthy Produce Company has developed genetically modified purple tomatoes rich in anthocyanins by introducing two snapdragon genes, Delilah and Rosia 1. And it has been approved by the USDA and FDA and is now available in the select US grocery stores. Two decades of research into empowering tomatoes to produce anthocyanins is significant, given their daily consumption compared to berries like blueberries, blackberries. If you can afford it, consume a recommended dose of purple and red berries daily for the next six months to see what effect it has on your body. So let me tell you which ones are the best. Berries such as strawberries, blueberries, um, blackberries and red currants are a rich source of anthocyanin, but the highest content is found in mulberries, uh, elderberries and chalkberries. A study published in Nature found that mice-fed anthocyanin-rich foods lived 30% longer than those that were not. So you could live 30% longer. But it is not just about extending lifespan. It's about enjoying a healthy, disease-free life. So what if consuming anthocyanin-rich foods could improve the quality of life by 30%? But is this really possible? Let's dive in and find out. Oxygen has a dual nature. While it supports life, it comes with a cost. That is, aging. Oxygen isn't solely to blame for aging. In fact, our bodies have evolved to utilize oxygen in a manner that contributes to the aging process. Let's look inside the oxygen molecule to uncover its dark secret. This is the molecular orbital energy level diagram for O2, molecular oxygen. It has 16 electrons. The last two electrons are located in a different pi antibonding orbitals. These two unpaired electrons have the same parallel spins and they qualify ground state oxygen molecule to be a biradical. The mitochondrial energy transport chain produces superoxide anion radical, hydrogen peroxide and enormously reactive hydroxyl radical. Because they have an extra electron, they are so reactive all the time. When present in large quantities, they induce oxidative stress, causing significant damage to cell membranes, DNA, lipids and proteins within organelles. This damage contributes to aging and other chronic diseases such as cancer, cardiovascular diseases, and neurodegenerative diseases. So now that we've met the villain, which is reactive oxygen species, let's introduce our hero, anthocyanins. One of the most fundamental principles of biology is that structure determines function. The arrangement of something enables it to perform a specific role. This concept is evident at all levels of biological organization from atoms to biosphere. So the secret to being a powerful antioxidant lies in the structure of anthocyanins. They consist of a fused benzopyrrhelium core and an additional B ring. The type and color of anthocyanin is determined by these alkyl groups R1 and R2. For example, if I put OH here and here, it becomes delphidin, which is found in pomegranate. And you know how healthy pomegranate is. If I replace this OH with H, it becomes cyanidin, which is found in red berries. ROS, our villain, has an extra electron, and that is why it is so angry and reactive all the time. And our hero anthocyanins have alkyl groups that can donate hydrogen atoms to the villain and neutralize them. And by doing this, they become orthoquinones. 
So this ability to form quinones allows anthocyanins to directly scavenge reactive oxygen species and, and this ability is primarily due to its structure. Our villain, Ross, can originate from various sources such as normal uh, cellular processes, environmental factors like pollution and even stress. So don't take stress. NADPH oxidase is the prevalent source of the radical superoxide anion, which is formed when molecular oxygen accepts a single electron supplied by NADPH during cellular respiration. Most of the superoxide anion is dismutated into the hydrogen peroxide by superoxide dismutase enzyme. Hydrogen peroxide is not a free radical because it has no unpaired electrons, but it is able to form the highly reactive ROS, which is hydroxyl ion, through the Fenton reaction. Hydroxyl radicals are extremely reactive, and they can react especially with phospholipids in cell membranes and proteins. In neutrophils, hydrogen peroxide in the presence of chloride and MPO can be converted to hypochlorous acid, which can damage cellular proteins. Nitric oxide is produced from L-arginine by nitric oxide synthase, NOS. And nitric oxide is a free radical with an unpaired electron in the highest orbital. This is why it behaves as a potential antioxidant agent by virtue of its ability to reduce other molecules. NO is rapidly inactivated by the free radical superoxide anion to form peroxy nitrite, which is also a free radical and can cause oxidative stress. So I've given you some background about ROS and anthocyanins. Now let's apply that knowledge. So high blood pressure or hypertension is a cardiovascular disease responsible for 13% of global mortality. High blood pressure means the heart is working harder to pump blood out. The normal blood pressure is typically 120 over 80, which, but when it rises to 130, 140 uh, or higher systolic and uh, 80 to 90 uh, or higher diastolic, it is classified as hypertension. Endothelial nitric oxide synthase, ENOS, plays an important role in maintaining blood pressure homeostasis. Nitric oxide is one of the major contributors to endothelial-dependent vasorelaxation. But our villain, reactive oxygen species, can capture nitric oxide and turn them into peroxynitrite thus promoting vasoconstriction and hypertension. Anthocyanins have been consistently shown to increase endothelial-derived nitric oxide via modulation of endothelial nitric oxide, oxide synthase. Uh, and nitric oxide activates soluble guanylate cyclase, and that's a receptor, and can cause uh, vascular smooth muscle relaxation. So, soluble uh, SGC guanylate uh, cyclase is the receptor for nitric oxide in humans. It is an important um, a drug target for cardiovascular diseases. So, this receptor subsequently increases CGMP uh, when activates a CGMP-dependent protein kinase, uh, PKG, that mediates the effect of nitric oxide by phosphorylating the contractile proteins in the smooth muscles surrounding the blood vessels and then it relaxes the muscles, thereby lowering the blood pressure. So this is how anthocyanin-rich food combat aging and they boost heart health and can increase the quality of your life when uh, you consume them daily. So I hope this video was useful. Consider subscribing to this channel and I'll see you in the next video.